Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration how to install a grill mounted light bar. Unfortunately, through my editing, I decided to make this a two part video due to the extensive length. For this video, I will be showing you how to make a somewhat hidden custom bracket. I am using a 22 inch 5D LED light bar made by Aux Beam. If you missed the review video on this particular light bar, be sure to check that out. I will include the link in the description below. So first off, I'm working with a 1998 Ford Ranger, which shares the same platform as a Mazda B series around the same generation. I did rough out my plans with some basic measurements to determine if this would work, and drew up a rough 3D sketch on AutoCAD, which I'll show a little bit further on in the video. I will make the plans available for this project on my website for free as a PDF file that you can print out. The front of the truck does need to be disassembled. I marked out the rough location of the grill using some tape and a straight edge across the front of the grill as a reference point. This will save me from reinstalling the grill after to make sure everything lines up. The grill in this particular truck is held in with four bolts along the top and has two snap clips on the bottom side just above the bumper. I could have drilled holes in the bumper, but to be honest, I'm not a fan of that method. For this, I can give the truck a one-off custom look, and drilling the chrome bumper is not only hard, as the chrome plating is quite tough, but this will jeopardize the chrome plating eventually. Once you penetrate that chrome plating, this opens up an area for rusting or peeling. Next, there is the fuser behind the grill that needs to be removed. It's only held in with five clips. Before I did remove it, however, I did apply a couple more pieces of tape, to rough out the opening of the diffuser where it starts. The rubber trim was removed on each side so I could find the edge easily where the radiator opening starts. We will need to determine how we want to connect the bracket to the radiator support. We already have some existing holes which aren't being used and some that are being used by two modules on each side. I would have really liked to use these mounting locations but it's not symmetrical. I could make the bracket specific to each side but that can be a little tricky trying to square up everything. If you are drilling the holes, it's best to inspect both sides ensuring there is no critical components which you may puncture when drilling or where it may cause an interference afterwards. Clean off the area of any dirt or grease on the surface and then apply some tape. It's easy to make a rough layout and also easily to remove if we make a mistake. Permanent markers can stain the paint too, so this adds a layer of protection as well. Again, I'm making an extremely rough layout, determining what pieces need to be cut and where they start and end. The layout for the fasteners can be determined too. I did make a minor change to the bracket based on the tape layout, which I'll show in a moment. Unfortunately, further disassembly is required. The plastic frame where the lights and grill are fastened to will need to be unbolted, but not completely removed to drill the holes for the fasteners. I posted this on my Instagram a few weeks back in case you were wondering what it is. This is my rough layout, it is larger than my finalized design, and instead of using T fastening points, I stuck with an L shaped fastening points instead. Now for the material, it's good to order a little more than you actually need. I went to a local metal supplier, gave him a list of material that I needed, and here it is. If you find a metal supplier or a machine shop, purchasing the material will most likely be much cheaper than compared to a big box or hardware store. I have scheduled 40 1 inch diameter pipe, 1 inch 90 degree bends, which I'll explain why I'm using those in a moment, 1 and a quarter inch by quarter inch flat bar, and 1 and a half inch by 3 16 flat bar. Here I'm starting off with the main bracket on the radiator support. I originally planned on having the full height vertical portions, but instead I decided to make the horizontal portion continue the full width of the bracket so I can install the fasteners directly into that piece. If by any chance the welds did fail, there will still be fasteners holding the bracket. For this I am using a square to ensure my cuts are accurate. First rough markings with a paint marker and then using a scriber for the exact dimension. If you are a beginner welder this is certainly a great project to help perfect your skills. Ideally a cutoff saw is best for squareness but I don't have one and I know most people don't as well. Instead I'm using an angle grinder with a cutoff disc. If the cut isn't fully square these can be touched up with a grinding disc or file. I did double check to make sure everything was square, touched up the areas as needed. Considering this is a thicker material, I am chamfering the edges that will be welded to ensure maximum penetration. 
If there is minimal penetration, this can create a weak point that can fail. Beyond that, this also allows the welded areas to remain slightly sunk, so minimal grinding is required. Excessive grinding of a weld can also jeopardize the structure and strength. Now for welding. Here I'm using a flux core MIG welder. All surfaces which have to be welded must be cleaned to help guarantee a clean structural weld. If you have a surface to clamp down the parts on, this does make it much easier to weld as they don't move around or distort. If you're new to welding, a tack weld is just a small dab of weld to hold everything in place. This helps with layout, prevents movement or reduces distortion, and if something needs to be adjusted, the tack weld can be easily ground off and the part can be removed. For this I'll be tack welding on both sides to reduce heat distortion. Considering I am working with a flux core MIG welder rather than a gas barrier, there will be slag on the welds which need to be cleaned using a chipping hammer and a wire brush to remove the slag and to clean the area. Just to give you a peek before I do a full weld on everything. A full weld can be applied to each side now. The chamfer I've applied to the welded joints called the double V not only helps the penetration as mentioned before but also helps prevent heat distortion which can pull the material almost mimicking a bend. And now the welds can be cleaned up removing any slag. If you find a spot where the weld may be a little high, a grinding disc or flap wheel can be used to knock off the high points. Drill the holes for the mounting points for the radiator mount. For this I'm using a drill press so everything can remain square and accurate. Mark the center points using a scriber. Then a center punch and a hammer so the drill bit doesn't wander. Use a center drill first to create a pilot hole. A pilot hole will help keep the drill bit on center. This is especially important when using larger drill bits. A center drill is much more secure than a regular drill bit as it doesn't have a flex, which will make it wander if too much pressure is applied. Cutting oil can be applied for the drilling points. The cutting oil will provide lubrication so this reduces friction, which will increase cutting action and help reduce the chance of the drill bit dulling. For the radiator mount install, I use clamps to hold everything in place, just tight enough so I can center everything up and mark out the holes to be drilled. I use common reference points, which were symmetrical to the truck, to keep everything as accurate as possible. To drill the holes for the mount, I used a transfer punch first for the hole layout on the top bolts. A transfer punch is a type of punch that is sized accordingly to an existing drilled hole and has a center point. Same as a regular center punch, one hit with a hammer, it provides an indentation for a center of the hole. The holes need to be drilled large enough for the threaded inserts I am using, or also known as nut certs. There is no need for a nut on the back side or welding of the radiator support. The threaded inserts use a similar tool as a rivet gun. It compresses and flares out, basically wedging into the hole. All tubing was cut to size. The pieces going into the grill will be slightly longer and adjusted once everything is into place. In order to get those square cuts, I used a paint marker, installed a gear clamp on the pipe, and then followed it around with a scriber on the edge. Here I've laid out a template on a piece of plywood with all the angles and distances that are required. This allows me to determine where I need to roughly cut those 90 degree bends to. So for the reason as to why I purchased these 90 degree bends, I had originally planned on having the pipe bent, but unfortunately the local metal fabricator wasn't able to achieve the tight radiuses I needed. So instead they sold me these 90 degree bends, which does involve a little more work, but in the end it gets me exactly what I'm after. The centerpiece was the final part I cut as the dimensions was only able to be obtained once the pieces were in place. And here just a quick layout before the welding begins. I used a protractor to get the angles laid out and a square for the 90 degree lines. Just like before, all welded joints have been chamfered and cleaned. My workspace is quite limited, so it was tough trying to keep everything square when welding. But then again, this can be done with minimal resources as you can see. Tack weld the bends into place. You can use the clamps to hold everything down into place, or welding magnets. Next, welding the portions which go through the grill. For this, I drew up a couple lines on the steel plate as a reference for the angle lined everything up and clamped it down. Just to give you a quick peek, after everything's been tack welded together, these welds will need to be chipped of any slag and cleaned up with a wire brush before running some beads. 
Test fitting the bracket onto the truck, first without the grill, and now with the grill installed. I want this bracket to be as close as possible to the grill once done. The tubing can now be solid welded after everything is verified to be correct. Unfortunately the tubing can be a little tricky due to the curvature of the surface so you can't run a continuous bead. To smooth out those welds, I'm using an angle grinder with a flap wheel just like before. Take your time, don't remove too much material, and if you have any lower pockets, more welding can always be done to fill up those low areas and reground again. This will knock down the high areas leaving a level surface. Start out with a coarse file and then finish up with a finer file afterwards. Here are those low areas I was referring to earlier which will need to be filled and smoothened out. Moving on to the mounting surface for the light bar. Assemble the light bar so we have the exact measurements. I know the rubber mounting pads do sit slightly past the mounting brackets for the light bar so I need to take this into account. Just like before I have used a scriber to lay out the holes, center punch to give the drill a starting point, center drill to provide a pilot hole preventing the drill from wandering, then using cutting weld to provide lubrication, maximizing cutting efficiency, reducing heat and maintaining the life of the drill bit. We are now ready for welding again. I have cleaned up the areas removing the cutting oil and prepared the steel for welding. However, no chamfering is needed this time. The flat bar is squared up to the pipe accordingly. A spacer was needed to be installed underneath the pipe so it will remain fairly flush on the top side. I decided to go with the plug route to keep somewhat of a clean, seamless design. I have also ran a couple short beads on the underside to remain hidden. As a close-up, here is my plug welds. And another close-up of the two short beads, which will be on the bottom of the bracket. Again, grinding down the welds, this should be done before painting. Same process as before, using a flap wheel to knock off those high spots. A final cut where the bracket ends. I've already determined where I want the bracket to sit, putting it into the place on the grill and marking out the areas with a paint marker. Using the flat bar I can create a straight edge. Measuring from the face of where the light bar is mounted to to ensure everything is square. I have taken some reference measurements from the mounting face to the rear. Then using a grinder to cut off the ends with minimal material waste. You may need to square these up again against the mounting surface to ensure everything does sit flat and the contact area is level. Now we can move on to the mounting points. I wanted to be able to remove the grill without any issues so the tubing will be a separate piece from the radiator support bar. I would like a clean hitting design so the fasteners will be hidden on the back side and nuts will be welded into the tubes. The light bar and bar frame isn't heavy so the cantilevered weight is minimal. Here I am using square nuts as they are slightly larger than compared to hex nuts. Therefore I can grind the edges off so it fits tightly into the tube then weld them into place. I am using a bolt to hold the nuts into place, trying to keep them square. I have sprayed the bolt down with the anti-splatter spray, so any splatter falls off easily and does not damage the threads on the nut when removing. Make sure you get a good weld on these, as you don't want the risk of them cracking down the road. I have welded each side, but have left the top and bottom points open to allow for any water drainage and allow for any moisture to evaporate. Grind the weld smooth again, so it doesn't affect the mounting face. All I have left is drilling the holes for the tube mount. You'll need to make sure the bar is centered up with the grill. Unfortunately with this particular truck, the opening for the radiator sits off to one side about three quarters of an inch if I remember correctly. But I have mounted the bracket on center in reference with the front of the truck. You can't even install the bar on the front of the truck with the grill installed. Then center the flat bar up with the emblem on the grill and use a paint marker to outline where the tubing does sit. I marked out the edge of the tubing's location which will be the reference point. Determine the center points of the nuts. I used a vernier to determine those. Then those values can be transferred over to the radiator mount. Mount the tube into place just to verify everything sits correctly. The tubing will sit flush with the top side of the bar. Mark out the horizontal position and then the center points. This is thicker steel, so I've added some cutting oil. First using a center drill, adding more cutting fluid, 
and use a correct size drill bit for the bolts. I've already done a test run so the bracket does sit correctly as it should. I'll show you that a little further on in the video. Now moving on to painting. For painting we do have some various options depending on your personal preference. For prep, wipe down the pieces with a wax and grease remover so there will be no contaminants when sanding. Depending on what type of metal is used, you will need to remove the coating whether it's a paint, oxidization, from manufacturing, slag, or whatever else that may affect the final finish. I used some abrasive pads and then finished up with 220 grit sandpaper before the primer stage. Using a handheld sander allowed me to remove the sharp edges and burrs and a file can also be used if you wish. Give the pieces another wipe down with a wax and grease remover. Ensure they are clean and free of any contaminants. For primer, this was explained in a basic rust repair video, which I will include a link in the description below. I don't want to go too far in depth here, try not to repeat the same information, and keeping this video somewhat condensed. Using a filler primer, this will allow me to hide any imperfections in the steel. Steel from manufacturer may have some dimpling, scratching, and other forms of imperfections, so you can hide those if you wish. Apply a primer, it's important to work in a well ventilated area, and wear a respirator. Time to lay some color. Pick a color and finish of your choice. For me, I am using a gloss black. The bar will remain subtle, easy to keep clean, with a smooth gloss finish, and matches the black truck. Apply the paint. When finished up with the underside, it was tough as I didn't want to leave it for the next day. So I ended up installing a bolt, wrapping a hard wire around that bolt, and then hanging it up and applying paint to the bottom side. Finally, we can move on to installation. The radiator mount will need to be installed. For this, I have used Allen head fasteners, flat washers, and a medium grade thread locker to prevent them from loosening under any vibrations. The front end of the truck was fastened back into place, but I did leave out a small center support bracket so I could install this radiator mount. Then the mount was installed later on afterwards. Unfortunately, the diffuser does not clear the bracket that bolts up to the radiator support, so I will need to notch it out. I roughed out the area using a marker and square, using a square to create a symmetrical cut. Next, using a hot knife, I was able to create a clean slice in the plastic. I had to do a couple test fits and make adjustments accordingly as the plastic isn't totally square. Once satisfied, I cleaned up my cuts with a file. The vertical cuts were about one and a half inches long and the horizontal cuts ended up being about three quarters of an inch. Here's a little preview of what I talked about earlier so you can see the whole setup before the grill and diffuser is installed. A close up preview. I'll give you a few different angles for the best details possible. Hex head bolts were used for the tubing. If Allen head fasteners were to be used, the clearance for the Allen key may be too tight. With a wrench, I can come alongside of the bolt. There's absolutely no flex in the fabricated mount. All the welds remain to be very well hidden, and the bar should be quite durable. Finally, I can install the plastic diffuser, which installs in reverse of removal. Make sure those push clips are seated correctly. So this is what I'm left with. Fits quite clean, very well hidden, and there is no need to leave the diffuser out. A similar idea could be used for a light mount behind the grill too. This will depend on what type of grill your vehicle has. For this truck it does have a thicker style grill which will block the light output than compared to a mesh style grill. Reinstall the grill. Install the tube frame for light. I have left the light on this just for personal preference. I used the foam supplied in the packaging with the light bar to hold it into place. Applied some thread locker to the bolts and flat washers as well. It may seem like a tight space to work with but it's not any worse than working on a starter motor. Just be careful around the radiator not to damage the fins. This is a little preview of the blueprints from the light bar mount for this particular truck using the manufacturer of this light bar. I'll include the full plans on my website, link will be included in the description below. Be sure to stay tuned for the next video on how to wire up this particular light bar. New videos are uploaded every week to my channel, so subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking on the button below the video. This concludes the rest of my video, be sure to give me a thumbs up, and if you have any comments please feel free to post them. Thank you for watching.